Let's get a little star power and a little bit of conversation here with Ian Book joining us. Ian, thanks for the time, man. We appreciate it. So I, I guess when you look at this, the playoff rankings, we yell about everything. From the, your standpoint, how much attention do you guys even pay to all of this? Um, a little bit. I mean, we hear about it. and uh, But Coach Kelly just says, you know, one week at a time and, and let the, the rankings just kind of figure themselves out. And uh, it's been an unbelievable season. And here we are ready to go and, you know, play in our first ACC championship game. So we're just excited, excited for another rematch against Clemson. Uh, yeah, and I am curious because you mentioned and you say that and I've said it tongue in cheek all year. Notre Dame gets to do its one year away in the conference and and you guys have done so well in this year. But it, it feels like it's been a bit, bit of a different approach from Brian Kelly, your head coach. How have you seen him approach this season this year in such uncertain times, maybe in a way that's different than in years past when you've worked under him? Yeah, I mean, it's just a weird year with COVID, obviously. And uh, um, just, you know, starting with COVID, not even knowing if we were going to play, and then joining a conference. Obviously, all of that is just so different. And he's just had a great message the whole time. And this team has done an unbelievable job of not shying away from anything. And and he just comes in every week and says, um, we're, we're in a conference, and it's one week at a time. And, and we feel fortunate that the ACC allowed us to join. And, and here we are. Take the season one week at a time. And, uh, you know, he's never played for a title, and we haven't either. And, and here we are. And uh, our ultimate goal is the national championship, but this is just uh, – it's the ACC titles first, and then we'll get to the national championship. Yeah, you guys are certainly taking the ACC by storm, just knocking my University of Miami Hurricanes out of the conversation. Um, I do want to ask you, though, because we have a Heisman show that we do on Fridays, and a lot of the conversation has been about other quarterbacks, but when you look at your resume, you're the winningest quarterback at Notre Dame. Do you feel like you should be in that conversation more? Yeah, um, honestly, I'm just focused on – on our team and in our season and the Heisman's a bunch of great talk and I love it but um I mean I would love to be I'd love to be a part of it I think I can compete and uh but again I'm just focused on the season I kind of let that take care of itself but uh my goal is to win a national championship with this team and, and keep leading the offense and uh just let that kind of take care of itself all right, so Ian, obviously one of the things that comes up every time we talk about Notre Dame, I feel like, is the past of Notre Dame in the playoffs or for some in this room, the championship. Uh, it, it seems to be something that we always have to answer, and I don't really understand it because it affects every team differently. So how frustrating, frustrating is it for you guys to be having to answer questions about Notre Dame's past whenever there's a playoff conversation? Yeah, uh, it's tough, and it's kind of just, you know, being a part of Notre Dame. That's what it's like. It's, you know, a lot of people like you, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't think you belong, and that's just the kind of the way it goes. And, again, just taking the season, you know, one week at a time, and uh, especially at Notre Dame, going undefeated can always help you and, and, and get you into the playoffs. And another win uh, for an ACC title should really help us get into the playoffs. And uh, But it, it's it's part of Notre Dame. People want to talk about the past and, and what happened in 18 when we made it and stuff like that. And it's a different team, different year, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different circumstances. So, we just try not to let that bother us. You know what, Ian? As someone who has to go to work in a building every day full of Northwestern and Syracuse grads, I understand exactly <laughs> what you're talking about here. So exactly. it is a difficult lot in life. But it's one that you weathered, and, and you've won at such a high level. And you mentioned 2018. You guys do go undefeated in the regular season, find your way to the playoffs in that year. So I'm curious, what have you and some of the veteran leaders on this team that were a part of that squad, what have you guys learned and brought to this season that you think has helped prepare you guys for what's going on right now? Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of leadership things, you know, we, I look back at that game and I was young. A lot of us were young players and it was a big stage and, and, you know, now we're the old guys on the team. A lot of us are fifth <laughs> years now and, uh, you know, we're just leading the team in a different way. And, and uh, it just feels special that, um, you know, we get that opportunity again. Uh, you should be calling yourself season or wise, yeah. not old. That's the not way we old. use it to make ourselves yeah, feel better right now. <laughs> exactly. We 30, so, we... <laughs> so there was a video that went viral uh, this past weekend of your leprechaun um, kicking the ball. He actually is like pretty skilled at uh, being God. a kicker. It's amazing. Uh, did you see this and what did you think about it? Yeah, uh, I just saw that actually recently. Okay. And uh He's talented. We should, we should suit him up and, and get him on the team. So I'm, I'm impressed. He did a good job, and it's a pretty cool kick. You know, I'm, 
It's a pretty athletic leprechaun, so it's good that he's representing the Irish. <laughs> but, but let's be real. Like, last year I was traveling with game day, and the leprechaun at the time was also super athletic. Like, it, what's the criteria here for being the leprechaun? Like, they're athletes. <laughs> Acquired. It's a pretty competitive thing is what I've heard, so it's it's a big deal. There's a lot that goes into it, guys. The leprechaun is actually on scholarship, I believe, as well. And so you got to go oh, out wow. there and go out there. And make, you're, listen, it's like we always say, they're on scholarship too. So these kind of feats of athleticism are what we can expect here. I am curious for you, though, Ian, feats of athleticism during this season have been many for you, evading pass rushers, but it, it all culminated in the North Carolina game, the flip her around the world in that one. How much have you heard about that one play positive from the public, and what did Brian Kelly say to you as soon as you got over to the sideline after that series? Yeah, it was positive from the public, um, but uh, Coach Reese was pretty hard on me for it. He didn't, he didn't want, you know, he doesn't want that to become a normal thing, which I totally understand, and it kind of just happened. I definitely wasn't thinking about it, and uh, we just wanted to move the chains, and I f felt the chemistry with Mike Mayer and knew I could make, you know, make that flip, but don't want to make that a regular thing. Uh, Coach Kelly didn't say much about it, but Coach Reese said, let's not do that again. It was too risky. By the way, how hard is it to call him Coach Reese? Like, you you can tell him <laughs> from me to lay off on that one. He's always <laughs> going to be Tommy to me on that one. But that relationship does seem pretty interesting. You and Coach, Coach Reese, as he's known here, but you and Tommy really do seem to have a bond. How important has that been to you and this team this year to have a voice like Tommy in the room as offensive coordinator? Oh, it's been everything. Uh, he's a coach, mentor, friend, and and it's been everything. He's been there, you know, through everything for me. And he's someone that coaches me really hard. And he's also been through, you know, everything I've been when he's, you know, the quarterback at Notre Dame. So he's someone I can go to just for life advice as well. And he's taught me so much. And uh, I can't I can't thank him enough. I've learned all my X's and O's. And then if we just want to talk about something life related or something about the Notre Dame quarterback position, he's done it. He's been through it and he can help me get through it. And uh, it's a special relationship that we have, and he'll be a friend for life. Ian, we appreciate you joining us today, man. So congratulations on having a great year. Thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us, bud. Oh, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.